So I read uh, Wesley and the People Called Methodists mm -hmm. by Richard, man, Hertzen Ryder, I think is. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. this is a crazy question for you. How can John mm -hmm. and Charles violate so many movement principles and then still see a movement? Okay, and what movement principles are you thinking of that they violate? Yeah, I'm thinking of, uh, you know, releasing authority. Those guys were like mm -hmm. despots, you know, and I'm thinking of simplicity. Mm -hmm. they, they wrote up on how to take care of your horse for the circuit riders, you know. Uh, I'm thinking of unity with your brothers. Man, they were fighting all the time, you know, and I was like, wow, uh, this is okay. an amazing story. Let's, that's three. Let's start with those three. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. One, one is the, the control stuff. Mm. Um, the, the difference is, yes, when, when, when you, you came in to the quarterly meeting or the annual meeting, your work would be reviewed. Yeah. And your position might be reviewed if uh, if they weren't seeing fruit and and proper endeavor. So they, you know, John John Wesley was uh, in total authority and control of that thing. Yeah. But just remember, no mobile phones, no phones, uh, no no fast travel or communication. Yeah. When and often as as a young man, young single man, he's on that horse hundreds of miles away from John Wesley, who's somewhere else in the country. You know, the vast majority of his time, he's got to work it out. Yeah. Uh, and, and so it, it's, it's not quite what we would think in terms of absolute control. Mm -hmm. Now, the example you gave, how to take care of your horse. Mm -hmm. Well, that could be micromanaging or it could be what I call an adaptive method. Yeah. which is, okay, we have a baker or a former shepherd, never owned a horse in his life, <laughs> and, you know, this is his means of, of transport. He hasn't got a clue. How are we going to mobilise hundreds of these guys? We're going to all have some central school on how to look after your horse, or are we going to give them a manual? Um, and until they learn, you know, how, when to feed, when to rest, you know, we, we just don't want them killing that horse yeah. <laughs> because it's valuable. So, um, you know, I think you've just got to uh, flex with some of that because, because I, I think eventually some of that control undid the Methodists. And, and one reason why the Baptist movement continues to renew itself is that high value on the autonomy of the local church. Yeah. And that means you can have dissent, you can have innovation, all of those sorts of things. And the central thing can't, within limits, can't shut it down. So God can do something new. Um, so central control, like the Salvation Army has, you know, following on from the Methodists and other movements will bring you undone eventually, especially in the modern era. Yeah. But I'm not as convinced it was a problem, especially in the formative stage of a movement where it's like you've got a coach who says, this is how we're going to play the game, guys. You've got college students and you drum it into them. Yeah. <laughs> and then you send them out onto the field. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I, Was there a third one or do we cover them all? Uh, I think we covered them all. The uh, oh, disunity. The, this unity, disunity. The fighting. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so big fight with Whitfield, um, big fight uh, over um, choice of a marriage partner mm -hmm. by John, mm -hmm. John Wesley. His brother Charles intervened mm -hmm. and unraveled that thing yeah. and it broke John Wesley's heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he, foolishly married on the rebound and that was a disaster mm. uh, it's a mystery chuck mm. um you know well actually the fact that we as leaders god can use us amazingly and we can let him down and blow it, it shouldn't be too much of a surprise for yeah. us 
But I want to challenge the idea that before the gospel can go out and before we can see movements, there has to be perfect unity. Mm. You know, uh, I think I think that's not accurate. Mm. I think uh, in the ferment, uh, when God is doing something new, I mean, La, La Tourette, the probably one, probably the greatest historian of Christian movements and even church history the world's seen. Um, you know, he he would say one sign of uh, revival and renewal is the multiplication of organizations and uh, and and agencies and groups um, pursuing mission, mm. and sometimes in conflict with each other mm. because there's there's a dynamism here, and so uh, I'm not convinced that it's an ironclad law that everybody's got a uh, agree with each other before um, God will move. Yeah, and there's a bit of that in the New Testament. We've got a few problems yeah. there. And yeah, and you, you know, going back to Jesus once again, John says, "Hey, we caught guys casting out demons in your name. We stopped them." You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't do that. You know, whoever's for us is not against us. You know, so it's been from the beginning, but. I just yeah, and, and and plant in the field, and weeds will grow up, and weed mm. will grow up, and mm. God will have to sort it out. Mm. Um, don't don't. So, yeah, less than perfect. Yes, um, strong central control, but just remember, and and this was a fault of perhaps of John Wesley, but we'll we'll give him that fault because he had enough enough you know oh yeah good characteristics but here you've got um you know francis asbury and and others are, are, are in the u.s and 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 wesley with the best intentions also wants to control this thing you've got the american war of independence wesley's a monarchist mm. um and uh you know asbury and the others said we just got to do the right thing we're going to we're going to break with it, not break fellowship, but we are right. going to be our own movement mm -hmm. here in America. Mm -hmm. And we are Americans. Um, and, and you know, it wasn't easy for Wesley to come to terms. I'm not sure that he did. Mm -hmm. But God's greater than, you know, his love of the monarchy and, and all of that. Um, and, and so despite the strain and tension and even disunity between, you know, Asbury, who is – the John Wesley of America mm. um, and Wesley, uh, God's, God's, there's something more at work here, do you know? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I mean, the greatest tragedy of all of that, really, of that American War of Independence is, um, you know, America now is a country that, that you know, doesn't play cricket. Um, you know, so it's, it's there's yeah. a great loss. <laughs> You know, I could never never live in a country that didn't play. Yeah, cricket. great. Um, the great sin. They'll have to be a different heaven for Americans. <laughs> they don't play baseball. If they want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what's interesting is um, early on, I read a biography on John and Charles, and I even named my second son Wesley after them mm -hmm. because I was so impressed with them. And um, they, they were my heroes. And even after reading this book where it uncovered a lot of their weaknesses and mm. a lot mm. of the junk that happened in the movement, they still remain my heroes. And, yes. and probably even more because uh, I can yeah. identify yeah. with them. I'm, I'm saying, how in the world can God use a knucklehead like Chuck Wood? Mm. And it, it, mm. if we write our stories and we're honest, then we're going to have to write all our failures and foilings down as well. Mm. And man, yeah. to, to, me, to the glory of God. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. So it gave me... Uh, it's it gave, gave me great hope to read about all the, you know, the just junk that happened in that movement. So, yeah. Yeah. And, 
And let's be sure, I mean, Wesley died a poor man, yeah. you know. Uh, whatever control he exercised, he's not doing this because he's, he's uh, you know, conducting inappropriate relationships with women or skimming off finances yeah. or um, he's doing this because uh, he, he, to the, the best of his understanding, he's pursuing God and, and his kingdom in obedience. Yeah. And it seems like the Lord's not obsessive compulsive. Yeah. In other words, we don't, we're not going to be perfect. Yeah. Um, but there are uh, things that have disqualified leaders um, uh, where their legacy has been undermined. Paul talks about this, that, you know, maybe they'll scrape through judgment with the, the smell of the flames. <laughs> you know, they'll start yeah. coming to heaven smelling of smoke yeah. and their work burnt up. Yeah. Um, so we do have to take so those things seriously. Mm. And on the other hand, we've got to take God seriously. And if, if our hearts is to pursue him and to honor him, then yes, there will be some brokenness and pain along the way. Mm. Um, you know, uh, and yet somehow in our weakness, his, his glory will be revealed. Mm. Mm. Very good. Well, thanks for recommending those books, and I'll keep asking you, and if we can keep having these discussions, because I think they bear immediate fruit um, in what I see God doing here and, and all over. So 